Dave Mercer. Matt Pagrack. Welcome to The Cult, a weekly sport fishing debate show. Where this week, Panger, this is your topic. It is my topic. We're going with that intro? Yeah. Oh, okay. What, you want to re-record? That is not oh, We never this... re-record. No, no. One and done. Whether it's good or garbage. One and done. Spoon is the most versatile bait in bass fishing. I can't wait to hear this. It's the most versatile bait in bass fishing. I don't think there's any debate over it. Now, there's a bunch of other lures you could do this, but this came to me. I woke up in the middle of the night, and I I thought, the spoon. It is the most versatile bait in bass fishing. I literally made a note on it in my phone as a call topic. Hear me out on this, Dave. You can fish a spoon from the top of the water column with a, a doctor spoon that's weedless, that walks across the surface to 100 feet deep, with a one ounce slab spoon, you can imitate schooling fish, fleeing fish, bait fish. You can tie on a flutter spoon, big fish. You can fish it around docks. You can fish it in six foot of water. You can crank it. You can jig it. You can rip it. It can emulate a, a feeding bite as the fish track it down. It can generate a reaction bite as you snap it. You can catch fish in a hundred degree water with it, with a flutter spoon. You can catch fish through the ice with it. It's the most versatile ice fishing bait to catch bass. There is not any instance in which one of the types of spoons is not a very viable option. And if you go back to the sixties and seventies and eighties and, and, and even today, it was one of the most used lures in the tournament fishing arsenal when Ray Scott started this thing and continues to be popular and makes a resurgence every 10 to 15 years. It's the spoon, Dave. It hasn't made a resurgence since Buck Perry and yes, spoon it has. Plugging. Well, There's I guess all Kelly sorts Jordan of big flutter, the big spoon, the big and... flutter spoons. Look at what Zaldane's done on the flutter spoon. There's been uh, James BPT Watson events. One on the spoon. You had Watson spoon jacking. It's every eight or nine years. There's a new way to use it. Now you've got that Dixie Jet spoon that's like a mid-sized spoon, and they're catching them in the U.S. Open on Mojave on it. I agree, but I feel like what you're saying, and and trust me, I mean, spoons have been around a long time. There is a lot of great uses for them. I mean, the, like you mentioned, I mean, we haven't seen a topwater spoon in a long time ever play, but I'm we sure. Have. Steve Kennedy has used one, and it still plays. He just hasn't won on it yet. That's a staple in his arsenal. The spoon doctor on top with the one wire arm, and you reel it, and it goes doo -doo 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 through the grass and slop. That's a Florida bait. That's a New York bait. So how often do you tie that on over a frog? Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying whether I use it or not. Oh. I, like I woke up and said, hey, it's the most versatile bait. Okay. Like you okay. can use it in all different scenarios. It doesn't mean that I, I mean, I use a, a slab spoon. I always have a slab spoon tied on a three quarter ounce jigging spoon, silver hammer. I just think what you're saying is could be a bunch of baits. I mean, literally, it's what like other bait could it be? Any soft plastic worm. I mean, you can no. burn it across the surface. You can fish it mid depth, bottom, all the way through. You can fish it many different ways. You can slow fall it. You can burn it. You can speed worm it. You can do so many different ways to fish it. I mean, even as ridiculous, if I mean, your argument really, you could say, a jerk bait. I mean, if you really wanted to fish a jerk bait, right? One of the best techniques is heating up that bill and the jerk bait so you could just reel it right mm -hmm. above the you surface. Do a, it's a you surface do a lot of bait. jerk bait fishing fish. in 60 feet of water, Dave. Well, as ridiculous as you are, I mean, what I'll do is I'll put it. <laughs> I'll put it on a Carolina rig and put that sucker down oh, there. Oh, that's BS. That's one I of those do that things. As he... much as you throw a spoon on the surface. I throw a spoon on the surface a lot. I throw a spoon in the surface in the national championship on Hartwell. I reeled that sucker across the surface. So if I go back and look at your videos, your great videos that you do then. at events. I wasn't filming. Oh, then. oh, so there's no proof. You're just saying you do it. I, I just, I, I, I mean, we could find my co-angler back then. He said, holy cow, I didn't know you could catch him on a spoon like that. I, I disagree. And here's how adamant and perfectly I think this argument will end. I'm not even going to give you reasons. I'm just going to let the comments talk because it's everybody easy. watching this right can now be is an like eighth you are... of an ounce. I get that. You can throw an eighth ounce cast master that imitates fingernail shad and you can throw a 
three ounce flutter spoon that emulates a 12 inch gizzard shad. A plastic worm isn't going to do that. There's no other bait that can do that. A spoon in that category of bait is the most versatile category of baits in bass fishing. Yeah, but you're you're taking the plastic worm that I'm talking about and putting it in one hole and assuming it is one plastic worm that people fish different ways. But in the spoon argument, you will change the actual lure. It's still from a spoon. being this big. To yeah, being that's this a big. spoon. A spoon is that's what makes it so versatile. I think you could go out with an array of spoons and make a Bassmaster Classic if all you did was fish spoons the entire year on the Elite Series. Why Try that on that? for size. We got to make I the Elite Series first. That. that seems to be the <laughs> that seems to be the one where I'm struggling is the the making of the Elite Series part there, Dave. I, I don't. I'm saying that a spoon is a great bait. But I just feel like you, there is literally a ton of baits that you can put in that same category. And yes, sure, if you're willing to change through all the different, I mean, that's like just, say, okay, a hard bait. It can fish from top to bottom because on the top, I'm going to throw a popper or I'm going to throw a chapo and then I'm going to throw another hard bait. And it's yeah, going to be a, a deep totally diving different crank category. Bait. I'm talking about it's spoons, not, just though, metal you're... with a hook on it. That's the beauty of the spoon. It's metal with a hook on sometimes it. Sometimes it is a skirt and a weed guard, and sometimes it has hooks out the side. And so, Whether you're throwing a daredevil, you control it. You can, I mean, dude, it's the most versatile. There's no, I'm, I'm shocked that you don't agree with this because you have you're a daredevil a multi- in your boat. Uh, no, I was just saying different <laughs> types of spoons. Have you ever caught one on the black and or the red and white dare, daredevil? I have, like the I'm, actual red and white daredevil. I mean, I'm from Canada. I think it's a prerequisite. I mean, you need wire to, leader. Yeah. I mean, I have back in the past. I'm, I'm away from my wire leader days. But, dude, that as far as a fly out bait, as far as a going up north cottage bait, I mean, it is a great bait. But we're specifically talking about bass fishing. Yeah. But, I mean, dude, pike, walleye, everything eats a spoon. I mean, I've, I've, the first time I ever made money actually winning something was with a rainbow trout in the Toronto star salmon hunt. And it was in the mm-hmm. trout division. I won the weekly bonus. I got $400 of easy on the bottom boat wax. I garnered a deal with a local ta- tackle shop. Cause I didn't own a boat at the time. Yeah. I caught the fish casting off a of rocks and uh, they gave me $400 in tackle. I thought I was rich and I actually caught that fish on a little Cleo. A spoon. Ooh, yeah, that's so, how much of that four hundred dollars in tackle went back into purchasing spoons. None, none. I bought none? frogs and worms and all sorts of other crap. And it was all downhill from there. You should have stuck with the spoon, Dave. Yeah, you're right. Now nah, that's why I'm a tournament MC. It's, it's it's all it's all come together now. I well, listen. This is not a sexy take on this, but that is the most versatile bait in bass fishing. If you think about it. Now I know you claiming you could fish all this other stuff but these are all the ways the spoon is supposed to be fished it is the most effective way to to reach these fish i mean dude you can do anything with a spoon yeah coast to coast but you don't you say you uh, can, no i do but i every have a time bunch of spoons. I ask you you're like no nah, not that and i dude i love spoons i fish spoons especially this time of year i mean mm-hmm. lake erie stuff like i love the spoon bite but there's a lot of different things you can throw before. I mean, I just don't think it's as versatile. I mean, it is versatile, but it's not as versatile as you think. And I would just, I would encourage everybody that watches this to help me out and shut Panger up by listing things that are more versatile than a spoon. It's going to be a short list. Well, we'll see, won't we? Keep her calm. The spoon is the most versatile bait in bass fishing. This is getting ridiculous, Panger. But that that's the truth. This is a good, like, seriously. <laughs> I never thought I was that passionate about spoons, but I well, guess I am. I think it's just passion talking right now. I think big spoons. I mean, you're in a little love and you're thinking about spooning. That's all big that's spoons, happening here. little spoons. Which are you? Uh depends. Wow. Fishes from both sides of the boat. <laughs>